Hi. Now, I'm assuming that you've seen other videos in my series on solving second order linear differential equations. But in those videos, we were finding out the general solution. But in this video, I want to take it further and show you how we can find a particular solution. And for that, we need to be given boundary conditions. Something like this, for this equation here, we're given that y equals 4, dy dx equals 2, when x equals 0. So, I'm assuming then that you're familiar with finding the general solution of these kind of equations. If not, you can always check out my website, examsolutions.net, and you'll find there's videos on there that will demonstrate this. OK, so let's see how we get this particular solution. Well, first of all, what we've got to do is work out what the complementary function is going to be, CF for short. In other words, we need to solve the equation d2y by dx squared minus 3 dy by dx plus 2y equals 0. OK? And to do this, we set up the auxiliary equation. We'll just abbreviate that to aux equation. OK? And if we do that, that auxiliary equation is going to be m squared minus 3m plus 2 equals 0. And this particular auxiliary equation factorizes, we've got two brackets here, m minus 1 multiplied by m minus 2, and that equals 0, leading us to two roots, two real and different roots. Those two roots are going to be m equals 1 and m equals 2, which is going to mean that the complementary function, cf then, is going to be made up from y equals a constant, let's call it a, e to the power 1x, or just simply x, plus another constant, which I'll call b, e to the power 2x. So there's my complementary function. Next, we want to look at trying to work out a particular integral, pi for short then. And what I'm going to do here is look at what we've got on the right-hand side here. It's a linear function, 4 plus x. And so what I can do is let y equal a constant. Let's say we call it lambda. And then plus another constant, let's call it mu, multiplied by x. So there's our linear particular integral, taking on that form. So we now need to find out what dy by dx is. So therefore, dy by dx is going to be equal to simply the constant mu. And if I find the second differential, d2y by dx squared, then that's going to be equal to 0. Next, we need to work out what lambda and mu are going to be. So we do this by substituting these values into this equation here. Let's call this equation number 1. So I'm going to say sub into equation 1. And if we do that, then what we have is, well, this, this first term is going to be 0, OK, because we've got that value there. But we've got minus 3 times dy by dx. So that's going to be minus 3 mu, minus 3 mu. OK, and then we've got plus 2y, so that's two lots of lambda plus mu x. So we've got two lots of lambda plus mu x. And this equals the right-hand side, 4 plus x. Now, to get lambda and mu, what we need to do is just start to compare say, coefficients. And I'm going to look at comparing the x coefficients first of all. So if we do that, what we've got is simply plus 2 mu here. OK, 2 mu must equal the 1 from the x here, so equals 1. 
So that follows then, it follows that mu must equal one half. And if we compare the constants, let's just write that down, compare the constants, then what we have got is minus 3 mu, minus 3 mu, and we've got plus 2 lambda equals the 4. And if we substitute mu equals a half into this equation, let's just call this equation 2, we can work out what lambda is. Okay, so let's just write this in here that if we sub mu equals a half into equation 2, then what we get is that lambda, okay, lambda equals 11 over 4. You can check that out, okay? So therefore, we now have our particular integral. A particular integral is going to be, from here, it's going to be lambda plus mu x. So we've got lambda, that's going to be 11 quarters plus mu x, so that's plus a half x. Okay? So that means that our general solution, so therefore the general solution, is made up of our complementary function plus our particular integral. So in other words, it's going to be y equals the complementary function a e to the power x plus b e to the power 2x and then plus our particular integral which is plus 11 quarters plus a half x. Okay? Now, what we need to do is figure out what our constants a and b are going to be. And that's where the boundary conditions here come into play. We know that when x is naught, y is equal to 4. So we can just put this down here that when x equals naught, we know that y equals 4. And it means that if we substitute these values into our general solution here, what we've got then is 4 here equals, well if x is naught, that's just going to lead to a plus, and if x is naught here, I'm just going to get b and then plus 11 quarters. Okay? Now we've got two unknowns here, so obviously we can't solve it immediately, so what I'm going to do is call this equation 3. And then what we need to do is create another equation where we can use these boundary conditions. And we've got dy by dx here equaling 2 when x is naught. So we need to get dy by dx by differentiating with respect to x our general solution. So let's just go back to that general solution so we can say that from the general solution, I'll just write it as gs for short. If we differentiate it with respect to x, we've got dy by dx then equals, and differentiating a e to the x is going to be still a e to the power x. And then for differentiating this second term, we're going to get plus 2b e to the power 2x. 11 quarters disappears, and then we're just left with plus a half. So, we know then that when x equals 0, dy by dx, we're told, equals 2. All right? And we can substitute these values into this equation here and it follows then that what we have is 2 equals and then this is just going to give us a and the second term here will be just simply 2b and then plus a half. So we've got another equation with two unknowns in so we could call this say equation 4. And that means if we solve equation 3 and 4 simultaneously, we should be able to find our values of a and b. Well, I'm going to leave it up to you just to do that, okay? So uh, I'm just going to write here, solving simultaneously, okay, equations 3 and 4. If you do that, you should find that you get a 
turning out to equal 1 and B will turn out to be equal to a quarter. And with these two values we can write our particular solution to this differential equation. We just substitute our values for A and B into the general solution here. So that's going to give us therefore Y equals a e to the bx, a e was 1, so that's 1 e to the x, or just simply e to the x, plus b e to the 2x, so we've got plus a quarter e to the power 2x, and then plus 11 quarters plus a half x. Okay, so I hope that's given you some idea of how we can solve these second order linear differential equations when we're given boundary conditions. Alright?